who the hell are you? Hi, John. Oh, oh, wait. <laughs> it's 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 coming. It's coming. It's coming back oh, to me now. Wait, don't don't. It's mm-hmm. coming back. I Mm-mm. didn't. We used to do a podcast together. John, this is your life. Many years ago. <laughs> oh wow. Ages ago, you yes. and I co-hosted a podcast together. We did. Do you remember that? I, I I do vaguely recall that. Is this a reunion show? Is that what's <laughs> happening here? <laughs> yes, it is. No, it's Whee! a re- we're, we're rebooting the podcast. It's a, a re- reboot. It's a reboot. I like a reboot. I like a reboot. Uh, uh, like they're okay. Well, Sometimes they're not great. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I like a reboot of shows I didn't like in the first place because then it's like, yeah, how are they going to fuck it up this time? <laughs> <laughs> in a totally different manner, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, it's good to see your face. Hey, John, it's good to see your face. It's, I wish the listeners could see your face. That's how good your face is right that's now. That's so good. Your face is kind of, the sun is hitting you in a way that's like you're, you're kind of on fire right now. You're right. We went from golden hour to my <laughs> face is a hot spot. That's what's happening. It's just like I, I might as well be a plaid jacket right now, like a really tight hound's tooth. Yeah, it's check. just like you're blown out, man. Yep. Yep, that's what's happening. It's all right. It'll fade. The sun goes down every night. That's I'm what used they say. To it. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so what? what is it we're doing? Because you're going to need to teach me how to do this again. John, we're recording a podcast. Okay. It's called My Mistake. So it's called Cat's Mistake? No, no, no. My Mistake. Right. Cat's Mistake. No. My Mistake. So it's John's Mistake? <laughs> Say it with me, John. My mistake. My. 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 My mistake. 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 My, my mis- mistake. My mistake. Okay. That's, that's, you got it. Thank you. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Just, you know, sometimes it takes me a while to get there. And uh-huh. then, uh, but then once I do, I'm glorious. So good. Yes. Uh, uh, John, ask me how I'm doing. Cat, how are you doing? John, I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I know, I know. I'm so sorry that you're terrible. But do you uh, want to tell me and the mistakers why you are terrible? Cat? Yeah, well, first of all, it is good to see your face on my Zoom here. And it's good to D- talk to you. Ditto. We, we took a break. We did. Um, after taking a break, didn't we take... We had just come back from a break, it feels like. I feel like we had, because there was the, this is how this works. Like, like, remember when in 2016, everybody's like, oh my God, 2016 was the worst year ever. Mm -hmm. And then, and then like things got a little, maybe a little better. And then, and then everything went to shit. Like it was like, it was like, oh my God, I would pay good money to go back to 2016 right now. Uh, So yeah, we had taken a break and I gave you some crap about it. I called it a forced hiatus and you you know, that. that kind of thing. And then, <laughs> so and then, let me let, let's. I'm going to take you back. I'm going to tell you a little story about the saddest summer ever. Oh God! <laughs> and I'm and again, if you're new to the podcast, wow, what an episode to come back for! Hey, <laughs> this is how every single one is going to be. Like yeah. every single one has been this way, exactly. and it always will be. Yep. Um, I I laugh to uh, I laugh through the tears. I laugh through pain. So <clears throat> I don't think what we're talking about is funny, but it's how I kind of cope uh, with going through things. So that's to be a, fair. I'm putting that out there. To be fair, yeah. I don't think you have to justify to anyone <laughs> in the world the <laughs> fact that you can find humor in a situation that might not be, you know, that other people might treat with sort of a, uh, you know, a, 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 a lot of respect and, uh, and, and dire countenances, dour countenances. Yes. Well, thank you. I'm just thank saying words that. now. Uh, yeah. And I'm, they're just wa- I'm just washing over me. I'm like, oh, mm. this is, I missed this, John. <laughs> <laughs> we. So, and I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, mm-hmm. In my head, there's like, mm-hmm. there's, there's already a conversation going on in my head. It'll happen. And I'm, and I'm just like, just hold on. Stop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to get there. <laughs> so, beginning of June... Mm-hmm. We find out that our beloved dog Cooper yep. has cancer, and it's like there's really nothing we can do. It's aggressive. Mm-hmm. We are just going to ride this out. We're going to give him, make him as comfortable as we can, and you know, 
have as make as many good memories as with him as we can. Sure. And so that's what we started to do. And I don't think I meant I don't think we even talked about Cooper yet on this show because I wasn't ready to talk about Cooper. No, we talked about right? Max way back in the day, but I don't think we talked about Cooper. No. Yet. So, um, you know, devastating news. He has been our focus since Max died. Um, mm-hmm. And so it was, you know, really hard and, you know, trying to be like stay positive in that we're going to do, you know, we're going to have as much fun as we can with him. We're going to make him as comfortable as you can, but knowing where this was going to end. And sure. so, uh, he actually outlived his, his prognosis, mm-hmm. which is nice. Go Coop. Go Coop. He was tough, man. He's a tough little dude. And, you know, even up at the end, it was like, well, we know he's going to, we know things are going to get worse quickly. Mm-hmm. So we make this, you know, gut re- gut wrenching decision to say goodbye to him mm-hmm. and yeah it's it's it was one of the hardest things that we've ever had to do and we're still grieving him like it's there's still we you know we miss him and For like sure. the, one of his dog beds is right here because we can't bring ourselves to to pack it away or get rid of it we just can't yeah. we're not ready yeah you know so, th- go ahead no you go oh the the, the thing about a pet passing that people don't necessarily think about, especially people who don't have pets themselves or who aren't very wrapped up in their pets, Um, especially when one works from home, like you spend like 24 seven with that pet. So the actual change to your life can be Mm -hmm. greater even than if you lose a family member, right? Because like, let's face it, you know, how often do you talk to that brother or sister, how often do you like, it's maybe yeah. once a week or a couple times a week if, if you're really close with them. But like the dog or the cat, they are there all the time. Yep. Yep. You're ab- absolutely right. And because we were both working from home since the pandemic, mm-hmm. we, I mean, for the past, how, like what, three years, I guess, we have spent almost every minute of every day with this dog and if we mm-hmm. weren't with him we were worried about leaving him a home alone where right. eventually we stopped leaving him so we would if we were going to a friend's house like your house we were like hey man can we bring the dog like he became our constant companion because there's no fucking yep. way we're leaving him alone because he was at to a point where he was having a hard time walking uh you know he would he, sometimes he would fall mm-hmm. he was getting a little bit of dementia so he was like confused some of the time and, you know, I mean, John, you know this, but, like, we went through a lot with him. Oh, yes. <laughs> it was not an easy last, I don't know, three or four months with him because, like, you know, he wasn't sleeping through the night. And so Leah was staying up all night with him basically until he fell asleep. And then she would sleep. Like, it, it just aren't. That's all we That's all we were doing. The last mm-hmm. month or so of his life was just, what are we doing today, Cooper? How, how's Cooper today? Yeah. So, um yeah, it's it that was just so taxing and emotionally draining and physically exhausting. Like Leah Leah did uh, went above and beyond for this dog and she, you know, she would do it all over again for him. She did, and I know you did too. <sighs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the time came, it's time to say goodbye to Cooper. Horrible. Worst day of my life, <laughs> I thought. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> it was really rough. But we did it at home. It was with his um, his home vet, and so she knew us very well. She knew him very well, mm-hmm. and it was, as far as those things go, it was the I think it was the best possible way to say goodbye to him, and we didn't want to regret not doing it sooner, because right. we knew that we've we've had friends who have waited t- a little too long, and have had horrible basically like rushing the dog to the emergency room, right? wailing in pain. Like we didn't want that for him. He deserved so much better than that. 100%. And so as like our final act of love to him was saying goodbye because we didn't want to say goodbye, John, obviously like we, right. we would have held on to him forever, but it wasn't fair to do that to him because he was starting to have really bad days. Right. Um, so horrible, horrible. That was the beginning of August. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I feel like the last time we talked on this podcast, mm-hmm. my mom had just got out of the hospital yep. 
And I was like, oh, you know, I think I remember saying on this podcast something to the effect of, don't worry, she's all good. But, you know, she was in there for five days and things weren't weren't great for her. She was uncomfortable. <sighs> so, yeah, she, you know, we, we I won't get into detail, but my, my mom had to go in the hospital. They wouldn't let her go until certain levels in her system were, were getting in, were like improving. Right. And so that was ended up being five days and it was a, it was a very uncomfortable five days for her. And then we brought her home and she declined and like she couldn't, it was hard for her to do anything for herself. And so we brought somebody in to help and it was a whole big thing, but we, you know, she, we thought she was going to make a recovery. We, it, no, there was nothing was the farthest thing from our mind that she was in fact dying. We had no idea. And so I get the call and my sister's like, you got to get over the house right now. Mom's unresponsive. Ambulance is here. And again, sparing details that day, uh, August 14th is, it was an awful day. And unfortunately my mom didn't make it. And that's why it's the saddest summer ever. <laughs> it's been a really hard couple of months. And so, you know, we just had the memorial for my mom and John, you were there and it was, it was so lovely to see so many people come and celebrate my mom because that's all we wanted to do was, uh, was to celebrate her. And I think we did a good job. I think um, you did a lovely job. It was, a, it was a beautiful ceremony. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, so you've been through this. Like, I don't know what tomorrow's going to look like. Like, sometimes I'm like, oh, I've, you know, I'll be honest, like after this weekend moving, we knew that, you know, the memorial was coming. And so we, my siblings and I were just doing everything we could to make it the best. Mm -hmm. And so that was, that's what our focus has been. And now that's gone. Um, right. And so uh, on one hand, it's like there's a relief that it's, for me, there's a relief that it's over because it went so well and we did what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But also now it's like, well, fuck, what do we do now? <laughs> uh -huh. How do I, how do we distract ourselves or why do we, why do I feel the need to distract myself? Like I'm kind of like avoiding what the rest of my life looks like now without my mom. Sure. And it is not, you know, I'll never be the same. They say like, you're you're a different person from before you lose a parent and then after you're just never the same and i i, I totally yeah. get that now yeah i can i can vouch for that um yeah. you may you may seem the same to other people but as, i mean especially if it's a parent you're very close with um then yeah i mean i, I lost both of mine you know my my dad who raised me who's my stepdad but he was my dad uh raised me he i lost him in 1999 mm -hmm. and then my mom uh passed in no, I don't say that. My mom died in December of, uh, of 2017. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I had, I had a very hard time figuring out like why I was here after that, because she was such a big part of my life. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and I, I would talk to her a lot and she was sort of my moral compass and she was my cheerleader and all that kind of stuff. So it's a, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a tough, uh, adjustment, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm still figuring that out. And mm -hmm. I think I texted you randomly like, so when your mom died, did you hyper fixate on all the things you did that were shitty to your mom or, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. that's all I could think about. I was like, wow, I was a terrible daughter. I was a terrible daughter. Well, and I mean, you weren't first of all. And, uh, I mean, that's just objective truth. Uh, but, but the thing is, uh, yes, everybody does that. Oh my gosh, what could I have done better? Mm -hmm. You know, how could I have done this? You know, how could I have shown her that I loved her more? Mm -hmm. How could I have made her life better? You know, it's, it's all, all yeah, you, you, I think, I think everybody does that. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, and you know, with my mom, we had lots of time to, you know, talk about, things like this so that's that was a gift that i'm sorry you didn't get me oh. too and there are so many things that i wish i told her mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i 
I think I I was able to tell like part of my my eulogy when I spoke were like okay what would I tell her right what what are the things that I loved most about her that I didn't get to tell her mm-hmm. and it's so not fair <laughs> that we didn't get a chance to tell her all these things yeah John, yeah it sucks it it's, just sucks it's awful uh, yeah I I mean yeah I I I, I will tell you that. It's, this is one of those things where um, if you have it, it's not really all that, um, you know, I, I did have that. We, and I didn't have it at the end because it did move pretty quickly at the end, but we had discussed it because there was, there was a prognosis for her yeah. of, I think it was five years, and then I think she made it four years, and so that was how that went. So we, I mean, there was mm-hmm. some understanding that this was coming, unlike with you where it kind of hit you really unawares. You thought this was just some health stuff that was going to be squared away. Yeah. yeah, and you know she had had a, a, the last couple of years of her life were really tough on her, physically <laughs> and emotionally, um, and so like having now having the hindsight of it, like looking at it, it's like oh yeah, it was like a steady decline. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, we certainly did not we did not think that it was going to happen this way at all. We definitely no. thought it was like all right, well we're gonna you know, and she was like I'm gonna start you know i'm gonna start moving more i'm gonna like she she realized that she was in trouble Mm -hmm. like she knew she had to do something different and uh she was she had made the decision that okay we're gonna i'm gonna start moving more i want to get a little you know exercise pedal thing from my and i can be moving and stuff whatever um and then that's even more devastating where it's like she wanted to get better yeah and you know she just her body just couldn't just couldn't hold on no so that's what i'm going that's what i'm doing right now uh (laughs) it's been such a fucked up summer dude i I think we we just marked a first where not one but both of us just (laughs) cried while recording the podcast (laughs) that has never happened before are there like an is there an award that we can put ourselves up for some sort of, uh, is there like a should. podcasting Peabody or something? There should be like for, <laughs> for genuine emotion experienced uh, live on mic. Um, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. We. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So just going through like, you know, having to go and make arrangements and like, I've been. I was I was collecting all the photos from my mom's slideshow for the memorial. And that was just like a ugh, brutal mm, <laughs> job. Mm. Um, yeah. And you know, like I'm so glad I have two awesome siblings, and so the three of us have really just been a united force to get everything done and like kind of take turns losing it. You know. Mm, yep. And you know, do, making certain decisions and. Like yeah no that's fine go and go and cry in the corner I'll pick the flowers. <laughs> uh huh. I I, I I I am a little jealous of you there. I only have one sibling and we so we were like one of us could be off but that that meant that there was only one who was on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you can if you have two on and one off that's that's <laughs> you can get more done that way I think. Absolutely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and you know it's just like now it's just heartbreaking now seeing my dad go through this and yeah. you know as i mentioned and john as you know it would have been their 57th wedding anniversary um on uh, in november in a month yeah. or so yeah um and as and he so mentioned it was they were, they were together for two years before that so 59 years yeah right? and they really were inseparable especially towards yeah. the end uh because my dad's focus was just on my mom like right. he would, he were, he would insist on coming to her doctor appointments with her. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he, he was living for her. He would just wanted to do anything and everything he could for her. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like with us and Cooper, it's like, well, next day the house is really quiet yeah. and it's empty. And what is this what does the rest of my life look like without her is what my dad's going through. So, um, that's a whole other fucking thing. And that's just, it's just, it's just, it's heartbreaking. You know, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just really sad. Um, but I, I miss talking to you. I miss, you know, doing the podcast thing. And I, what, 
it wasn't until last week where I was like, yeah, I think I'm ready to come back. I think I'm ready to yeah. talk and come back to this because this is a big part of my life and it's, you know, it's therapeutic in so many ways. Yeah. This is a huge part of my life. Uh, yeah. like, and, and when, <laughs> when I was a working person, it was, it was, <laughs> it was a decent chunk of my life. Now it's like the thing that I l- look forward to the most. Yeah. And that's yeah. another thing. We've, we're both unemployed, we're both man. Unemployed. Like, yeah. you know, since technically since the strike, I've been unemployed, but my, I was supposed to come back in July and obviously that's not happening. Like, it's just like, what else is going to happen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what else are we doing here? What's happening? So now yeah. we've both had a rough summer. This has not been a good summer for I me. I mean, I'll, I'll give you the trophy, but yeah, it, it ain't been a picnic over <laughs> it's here. It's not either. a competition, John, but I definitely won it. You definitely won. Sad summer. Thank you. Saddest. Do you want Do you want to talk about your sad summer? I mean, I don't know how I follow that, really. Oh, like, you should have gone you know, first. I'm sorry. No, I, 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 I teed you up. It's my bad. No, oh, but just, listen, like there's yeah. no, again, there's, this is not a competition uh-huh. and uh-huh. you, yes, I'm not going to yeah. speak for you, but like, you know, just because someone else is having a hard time doesn't minimize right. the struggle that you, that a person is going through. So, right. Well, I, I, I can give you the bullet points. All right. So, no, so no. mid, huh? I'm on fire now. You are on fire. Oh, look at you. She's burning up, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, gosh. How do you how do you include uh, non-binary in ladies and gentlemen? Um, I haven't ever thought of that until just now. Well, I know Anne Hicks Bleeker. Her, you just her don't line say is it. guys, gals, and non-binary pals. I like it. All That's right, what Anne guys, does. gals, and non-binary pals. All right. Well, I will I will keep that. I'll put that in my quiver there. <laughs> um, yeah. So so mid June, uh, I, I I had a, a surprise party of unexpected unemployment. Uh, surprise. <laughs> surprise and um really i feel like i'm just like i'm following the trend like i'm just a super trendy kind of hipster kind of guy because it seems like a lot of people are doing this right now there are mm-hmm. a lot of us out there you know just getting laid <laughs> off uh, getting laid getting laid off, off. <laughs> and uh so that happened um and the the you know how they say like those who can do and those who can't teach Mm-hmm. Um, those who used to be able to do manage, and that was what I did. <laughs> I was a manager at, w- at one point I was managing a team of 13 people. Okay. And, but what that means is the people who I was managing were writing all of the code. Ah, and I, yes. I was no longer writing the code because I was in seven hours of meetings a day. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, you would tell me you, mm-hmm. you, you shared your calendar with me once. Yeah. I don't, I thought my prep schedule meeting was, a uh, prep meeting schedule was bad. Mm-hmm. Dude, you can't do anything but have meetings all day. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. un- it, was it seems unrealistic, really. I mean, I don't know. I, I got into it because like, I, I unlike many people, I, I kind of don't mind meetings, uh, especially if you're working with people who you dig and sure. who are cool and smart. And I but mostly you need was time to do the work that you talk about in the meetings. Most of the work that I talked about in the meetings took place in other meetings. Like there I would, I, yeah, like I, oh, <laughs> I would never be mind. meeting with my team sure. and telling them, okay, this is what we need to be focusing on. So let's move these tickets around and figure out what our, whatever, all that stuff. So anyway, that came to a crashing halt. <laughs> yes. Uh, my human interaction probably dropped by about 85% at that Ooh. point. And even then, I mean, like I was working from home, so it was all happening via like Google meet. Uh, and as I said, I was spending like seven hours a day talking to people and all of a sudden I ain't talking to nobody. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. That's <laughs> yeah. brutal. And at that time, that was when my guts decided to, <laughs> to mess with me again. Uh, I got diverticulitis uh, which is no fun, and you can look it up if you want, but mm. I don't recommend it. Just it's, assume it's bad guts. It's weird because it sounds fun. <laughs> does like does that sound like a roller coaster game? Come to Magic Mountain and ride the new diverticulitis. <laughs> It'll scare your socks off. Extreme. Extreme bowel problems. <laughs> Extreme uh, <laughs> bowel problems. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. We're going to turn your bathroom into a giant mud pit. 
Uh, yeah. Oh, anyway. No. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So there was that, and then like started to get that uh. Uh, fixed up. And you know, during this time, like I figure I'm, I'm not working, and my health hasn't been great. So I, I figure I'm gonna I'm gonna live my life a little healthier, right? So Absolutely. I, I decide. Commend you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I decide now. Part of this is like the 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 uh, antibiotics that I had to take for my condition mm. did not. They do not work well with alcohol. Um, sure. So I I but they that was a ten day run, and I'm like, I'm gonna not drink for all of August. Mm. Uh, and uh, so so I did. I did not drink for all of August. And um, I'm down like uh, I, I lost like 15 pounds in the Incredible. last month, uh, which is a little too much to lose in a month. I think that's like that's like eh. two. It's wait, let me think. <laughs> sure, it's fine. 15. Sure, <laughs> th- we'll call it 30 days, even though there's 31. But okay. that's um, that's a pound every two days. Okay, that uh, does when you put it that way. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like a lot. Right, but it was. But the thing was, it was. Mar- it was partly because I got it again. Like I had, the, I had the it had it once. Then I felt better. Then I ate everything I wanted. Then I got it again. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna keep not eating everything I want for a while too. So mm-hmm. between the not drinking alcohol, not uh, eating much, and what I did eat was very simple, basically mm-hmm. like yogurt Broth. and yeah. bread and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so now, so now I have lost 15 pounds. I like it. I'm going to slow it down a little bit. I'm going to lose it a little bit, uh, a little bit more slowly than I have good. been. Okay. But yeah, I, I, I would very much like to get down to 200 pounds. That's my goal. Right now I'm at uh, 215. Okay. Um, but yeah, and I'm trying to do this in a healthy way. Good for you. And that's where I'm at with that. Yeah. Well, I mm-hmm. um, have gained a lot of weight. Well, because I am eating everything in sight. Grief will either make you lose weight or gain weight. It sounds like you got the other one. I got the I got the gains, baby. You got the gains. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, I, I I'm sure I've said this many times. I am an emotional eater. I eat when I'm happy, when I'm mm-hmm. sad, mm-hmm. when I'm bored. Yeah. Yeah. When uh, yeah, I I've just been eating all the things. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know how you can cure yourself of that? <laughs> Get yourself a condition <laughs> where if you eat the wrong shit, yeah. there will be holes in you. Oh, Jesus in your, fucking Christ. Your lower intestine. Uh, so, yeah, oh, that, that's, how, no. that, that's how God cured me, <laughs> Kat, of my emotional eating. I haven't uh, had a pizza in a uh, month and a half. Johnny, Johnny, yeah, Johnny. Right. But the, the upshot is that I've actually continued. We're now uh, almost halfway through September. Which is and I still haven't had any alcohol, right? Me. I know. Um, I'm so proud of you. Good for you, man. I just figured, like, why start it back up again? I'm saving yeah. money, which I need to do because I'm sure. fucking unemployed. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and also maybe oh. best for me not to uh, be, be pounding my brain cells with, sure. uh, with alcohol. Well, I'll tell you what. Mm-hmm. You and I are, are on two very different journeys. Well, I think, um. you know, it's the law of uh, <laughs> preservation of eating habits and drinking habits. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I've been. I should. I should make uh, a retcon. I've been eating everything in sight, and mm-hmm. I've been drinking everything. Mm-hmm. 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 John, how do you feel about whiskey sours? Oh, I love a whiskey sour. You put in. You put in a um, some egg white on there too. In the, well, in the let me tell you. Yeah. Um, I feel like my face is just on fire right now. Well, it just looks like mine did like, um, a half yeah. hour ago. Fair so. is fair. Mm-hmm. Um. So my brother-in-law, Michael, Mm -hmm. he makes the world's best whiskey Whiskey sours. sours. Mm -hmm. And my sister, um, she's vegetarian, Mm -hmm. and she's not a big fan of eggs. So they found this um, egg white substitute, basically. But it's made for, specifically for cocktails. Okay. And it comes, it's like a tincture, so it comes in a little dropper. Mm -hmm. And it simulates the frothiness that you would get. It's like a, it's basically for V, it's a vegan... Mm-hmm. Cocktail substitute for egg whites because egg right. whites get you nice and frothy and foamy, and it's a delightful experience. Mm-hmm. So, he makes a wicked, wicked whiskey sour, and so I'm addicted. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've been making them at home, 
not as good because I don't like to use the egg white. Like, a, whatever. I'm I'm lazy, so it's like it's, yeah, lemon juice. There's mm-hmm. some, some, uh, homemade simple syrup. I made my own simple syrup. Nice. Um, Look at you. Throw some whiskey in there, and I've been. Mm-hmm. It, it's delightful. And right after my mom passed, <laughs> it was just like. It's on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, just hook up the IV drip. I, I'm with you. Oh, I, yeah. my God. Yeah. I uh, ate at every fast food restaurant in the town that I was in when my mom died. Yeah. Um, I like, I went, and this was in Indiana, so I went to Steak and Shake. Hell, yeah. White Castle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that was what I was doing. And then, and then I'd get home, and, and I would have vodka. <laughs> yeah, see, this, like, none, none of this fancy whiskey sour shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I am lazy, mm-hmm. and so then it just turns into like you know, all right, a couple whiskey shots <laughs> and then some beer. Um, mm-hmm. But I, ha- because I, we are, I mean, we are my my wife and I, Leah, Leah, who I married, who to, you married on purpose. We are, mm-hmm. <laughs> we are, un- we're both unemployed, right? Really rethinking the decision to both be in the same industry. Where mm-hmm. this is twice now that it's like, yeah. First, our the show that we were on together got canceled. Yep. It's like, oh, we're suddenly both unemployed, and now this whole strike thing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we're kind of on a budget, and I can't go around and, you know, spend money on, on fast food. Okay, I mean, that's all, John. That's <laughs> all I want to do. I believe you. Isn't it weird? When we were young, fast food was cheap, and that's why a lot of people ate it. Now I it's freaking expensive. When did that happen? I don't know. Because when you, boy, did it. It sure did. Because you're talking yeah. like 18 bucks at a drive through for one person. Like, yeah. I mean, like, I now that one of those, those, that, those, that one person is either you or me. So <laughs> let's just assume there's some gluttony going on. But That's you know. fair. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. But boy, it's just, Yeah. It's, uh, and I'm not ordering off the dollar menu. Like, come on. Oh, hell no. Get out of here. That's when you're like in your (laughs) 20s and stoned. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) When you do that. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to be good, uh, and not eating all the fast food, but this is actually an interesting segue or a tangent. Let's find Mm. out. Let's find out which it is. Um, I will say that, um, I've got some very, very, kind messages from people so i have this other podcast i'm aware of it it's called <laughs> it's called she nerds out uh-huh. and i w- there was no way in hell i was like yeah i'm not uh, as far as i'm concerned i'm never podcasting again like i can't i can't even wrap my head around doing that right obviously and you know this, I feel like this is the one time I get a free pass from John. <laughs> oh, I know. There are lots of things. Don't worry. There are lots of terrible things that could happen to you that would give you a free pass. Uh, I don't want any of them to happen. <laughs> and so I, I was like, you know, I'm not, I can't, I just can't. I'm not doing it, obviously. And then mm-hmm. it's like, well, Ann, <laughs> Ann Hicks Bleeker, boy, she can really, you know, she could be a good, a good uh, pinch hitter. Oh, yeah. Patron uh, saint. Of podcasters. Honestly. St. Anne. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, hey, do you think, do you want to sit in on Snop? Because, like, they need an editor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they don't They do not do that. <laughs> um, and so she did. She sat in for uh, a couple episodes. And, you know, uh, she was like, hey, are you okay with me telling people why I'm here? I said, yeah, absolutely. Like, it's I'm, I will be talking about this at, at length at one point on my mistakes. So, yeah, mm-hmm. please. I, I'm, I'm totally good with that. And so people were so kind. I got lot, lots of nice messages and text messages from listeners because <laughs> I, I just give my, my cell phone out to anybody. Mm-hmm. But no, honestly, like, and this sounds so hokey, but like the people who I've met through this podcast and through Sheeners Out have become good friends. Um, right. So I, I, I will say that like Master Chief Jen, she's a friend of mine. I will say mm-hmm. that, you know, Katie, who's now, you know, now the three of us have fortnighted together. She's we a friend of mine. We have fortnighted. We have committed fortnight. Um, and so, yeah, there's people who I've met through podcasting who I consider good friends. Yes. So those people have been reaching out and it's been lovely. And I, you know, that's a whole other, like, between people who live on the other side of the country from me to people like John and your lovely wife, Michelle. And there's just people who just show up and mm-hmm. drop off food, who show up just to give you a hug, who send you gift cards to buy food, 
who just send you a text every now and then and say, hey, I'm thinking about you. Like, I am overwhelmed with the amount of love and support uh, that we, m- that Lee and I have received, starting with Cooper mm-hmm. and now with my mom. Like, I am just, I'm humbled and I am, I just, I can't tell you what it means to me. I've learned a lot about how to be a friend during this time, honestly, having been on the receiving end of so much love. Anyway, I got a FedEx. So <laughs> about going about my business, uh-huh. FedEx, FedEx, you know, ring, ring, ring. Right. Oh, there's a FedEx and it's an envelope. It's not like a, <laughs> listen, sometimes there's a ring. Sometimes there's a knock. I just sometimes want everybody to knock know. that sounds like a ring. That sounds, that sounds like a ring. <laughs> Kat said ring, ring, ring. Oh. And she was knocking on. How yeah. mm-hmm. dare mm-hmm. you? Because some things haven't changed. <laughs> And that's good. You can always rely here. on that. That's why I'm here. <laughs> so <laughs> we <laughs> knock, 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 ring, uh-huh. ring, ring. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And I wasn't expecting anything because I trust me. Like over the last couple of weeks, mm-hmm. I've been expecting some things. Like uh, I also like to shop when I'm grieving. Apparently, oh yeah. I like to, I like to spend money that I don't have. The great thing is you, you drink until you're blackout and then just <laughs> buy shit on Amazon. That's not the my best. fault. I don't nope. remember ordering this. Nope. So I wasn't expecting anything. Mm-hmm. And I will say, it's my birthday month. And my it wife is. is like, you're not allowed to uh, open any FedEx boxes that don't have your name on it. It's like, oh, okay. okay. Right. This one, it was an envelope. had my name on it. Mm-hmm. I open it up. <laughs> and it is an envelope. Uh-huh. Very official looking envelope from Taco Bell. Uh-huh. It says Taco Bell, one Glen Bellway, Irvine, California. Corporate headquarters, corporate John. Corporate headquarters. This, this is the corporate headquarters for Taco Bell. This is like, I, I, this is big stuff. The first thing that I think is like, oh my God, the sponsorship has finally, <laughs> finally come came in. came through. Yep. <laughs> yep. I really <laughs> did. I was like, we talk about Taco Bell a lot. I, we had a whole episode, I think, on Mexican pizza and Dolly. <laughs> Yeah, Dolly Parton, I, we something did. like that. And yeah. I was like, oh, this is a dream come true. Taco mm-hmm. Bell has heard about me. They mm-hmm. know that I'm I'm putting in the work. Yep. yep. I'm like, this is the greatest day of my <laughs> life. <laughs> so I'm like, what is this? Mm-hmm. So I open it up. <laughs> it's very wait. official. I mean, John, this is so official. It's my name and everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I open it up. And... It is a gift card. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> this is, it says, to Cat and Leah, love lives in the butt and in Mexican pizzas. Here's a toast to Mama C and Coop. Love, Jackie and Buster. So this is a sizable amount gift right. card from yeah. Jackie and Buster. Right. Jackie is a good friend. She's an erper. She listens mm-hmm. to both of our podcasts, John. Both of, I should say both of my podcasts, John. Um, <laughs> and I got hey, she t- likes she likes <laughs> my uh, stuff on Blue Sky sometimes, so I'm good with that. Jackie is the best, mm-hmm. uh, and her gorgeous, beautiful, good boy Buster. He's the sweetest dog in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, she sent me a gift card for Mexican pizzas. Yeah, and I was like Leah. You will never believe what I got. I, and I read her the card. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I said, this is from Jackie. She wants us to have Mexican pizzas. And he's like, great. <laughs> yeah, because this is the best part. It's like she, she loaded it up with enough for two people, not, not realizing that there's no way Leah's going to touch a Mexican pizza. No. Not in this lifetime. that's why this is nope. the perfect gift. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. <laughs> so this is all for me. Go and Jackie, Jackie and Buster. I will tell you, and I've, I've already texted her this, but I will tell you, Jackie, every dime of this is going mm-hmm. to Mexican pizza. <laughs> um, my mom loved Mexican pizza. And I'm looking, and I'm, when I'm thinking back, it's like, yeah, my mom and I, like, we were both kind of obsessed with fast food. Mm-hmm. And we had our usual spots. Yep. And I knew, you know, like, oh, no. like I feel like the ones that my mom liked are the ones that I ended up liking for some mm-hmm. reason. It's really funny. Yeah. Um, could be genetic. It could, it's probably genetic. <laughs> So that was like, it was such a nice surprise. And this is like, honestly, uh, multiple people have sent us gift cards for food because the last thing you really want to think about when you're grieving is 
what the fuck's for dinner? Yeah. Um, and yeah. you forget to eat sometimes. Well, look mm-hmm. at this. I never forget to <laughs> eat. <laughs> so that was just a really nice, beautiful thing. And Jackie, you know, Jackie, I love you. You know this. Um, you know, Jackie was at Herb Division. Uh, sorry, Herb Depot. Herb Depot, Depot experience. <laughs> experience. Thank you. Gosh, why can't you're such a huge <laughs> figure in this fandom? Why can you not get the name of the convention correctly? I'm embarrassed. Uh, okay. Uh, well. Jackie was there, and she basically ran that whole fucking show. She was a volunteer, yeah. but like, boy, it would not have it would not have been as good of an event as it was without Jackie. And that's a, another thing. Like, when we found out about Cooper, mm-hmm. the 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 oncologist that we went to was basically like, you know, not basically. She said, "Yeah, well, he probably has about three to four weeks." And when they told us this, three to four mm-hmm. weeks was yeah. Herb Division Expo. <laughs> there we go. I was like, oh, great. I am supposed to fly across the country and moderate a shit ton of uh, panels around the time that my dog is supposed to die. Uh, mm-hmm. And it was a really kind of last minute decision. Like, do I not go or what? So I ended up shortening the trip and it, everything worked out. Um, and it, it that's probably one of the best things of the summer was was going to have fun with some friends. And then coming home and being able to spend time with 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 Coop's butt. Coop, yeah. Anyway, Jackie, I love you. You're the best. Katie sent us some 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 DoorDash money. Um, I got some really lovely emails from like AK uh, and some other listeners, and it just it means so much to me. And you, we have the best listeners, John. We really we, do. We really do. Oh, Jen and her co-host from the um, how many light bulbs how many light does it bulbs take? does it take mm-hmm. sent me a lovely card. Like I've just. I am humbled and overwhelmed, and we have we have good people that listen to this podcast, John. We I didn't. Do. I don't need to tell you that. I I'm aware. I mean, I I, I didn't get any DoorDash cash. But, <laughs> you know, like, that's all right. That's all right. I, nobody knows that my toe is as big as a pumpkin. That's true. Do you want to talk about your toe? <laughs> I better talk about my toe. Let's talk about gonna, your toe. For, just for completeness' sake. Your toe has like its own zip code now. I actually, think. I, I, I you will find out. There's actually it's different now. But uh, oh, yeah. Ooh, give no, us, I, okay, give yeah. us the story. So anyway, like I, uh, the other <laughs> night, which by, by the other night, I mean two and a half weeks ago, okay. I'm like laying on the couch and I'm like, God, why does my foot hurt? That's what's up. I go and I, I look down and my toe is gigantic. Oh boy. It is. I mean, like full on F- Fred Flintstone toe. Uh, <laughs> it is, it is red um, and is it, it like is causing me. It, like... Eventually. Yes. It was throbbing. It was, throbbing. yes, it was awful, awful, awful. And um, and also, if you touched it, you would almost burn your hand. It was that hot. <laughs> so, so this was that's yeah. scary, right? Like that's that's troubling. I don't I don't know what you're talking about. Why would, why would you be scared about that? That a part of your anatomy is maybe on fire? <laughs> yeah, it's no. Anyway, so like long story short, I had a, a doctor's appointment coming in a week. And I thought I can wait until the doctor's appointment because I am you are male, such a and dude. It's, yeah, it's what we do. Um, but then I'm also I'm also a modern male, <laughs> and I did two days later went. Uh, uh-uh, I can't wait. I went to urgent care. Good. They uh, the the woman's like, I think you have gout, and mm-hmm. I'm like, that would be really weird because I've already lost ten pounds in the last three weeks. Yes. What's John, gout? What is gout? I, <laughs> okay. It's something I've heard. You know, obviously I'm familiar with the term. I know right. it's a thing. I've, mm-hmm. I, if you ask me to save my life, I have no mm-hmm. fucking idea what gout is. Okay, it's cool. I mean, and a lot of people don't. And then there are a lot of there are ideas that people have about gout that are like could stand some uh, fixing up. Great. Basically, let's, let's educate. Let's the fix it right up. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So gout, cat, is caused by crystals in your joints and yeah and they are um crystals that are made of uric acid okay are you making this up no i am not (laughs) 
Lord, I'm okay. not. Uh, no, I, I, I'm, I'm intimately aware with it, aware mm. of this. So there are certain foods that are very, very rich in uric acid, and they are some some like foods. It's like some seafood is is like that. Red meat uh, has plenty of uric acid. So if you have somebody who's primarily eating like a meat-based diet and they're eating like the organ meat and like the, the red, nice red steaks, yeah. all that kind of thing, and then, and then certain fish, not all fish, salmon is good, but uh, some other fish is not good. Not anyway, all fish, hashtag. Not, not all fish, not all hashtag fish. not all fish. Um, all fish matter though. But... Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so so like she's like, I think you have this. I'm like, there's no fucking way I have that because I have been eating bread and yogurt <laughs> for like three weeks. Yeah. Um, and so she's like, okay, uh, well we're <laughs> okay, okay, but I don't believe you. She says to me. So she's like, she sends she me. She didn't say that. No, she didn't say that. At all. Okay. She okay. said, I'm going to take your blood and prove to you that you have gout. I see. And I'm like, you go right ahead and do that. I Double said, but, down. Right. But I also said, but you're going to give me an x-ray of my foot because it feels like it's broken. <sighs> um, so, <laughs> and, and she was like, fair enough. We'll see what the blood test says <laughs> and then we'll see what's up. Wow. Um, it's a very combative s- relationship you have with your doctor. It was fine. <laughs> Everything was fine. All right. Like, this is what, this is seriously, this is, and I'm, I don't know if it's just men. I've only experienced it in men. We have to, we do get combative sometimes about there is nothing wrong with me or what you think is wrong with me is not the thing that is wrong with me because I know better. Right. Uh, we, we're, the, we were, we're the only people stupid enough in the world to argue with someone who went to school for eight to 10 years to study well, what is wrong with us? I'll mm-hmm. tell you what, John. That's yeah. it. Might it might have a fairly different tone, but it's it, that happens with women where it's like, well, I know my body, and I'm pretty sure this is happening. And doctors mm-hmm. will say, no, 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 no. I know better. I know uh-huh. your body better than you do. So uh-huh. like, it's a, it's a, it's the same kind of conversation, but maybe yep. different energy. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Okay. Well, especially because th- th- this the doctor I had was female. It was a woman, exactly. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so anyway, we, we do the blood work, comes back. My uric acid is, mwah, it's perfect. <laughs> it's like right in the pocket, right Chef's where it's supposed to be. Yep, yep. Yep. Exactly. So, okay. um, congratulations and, and by the way. Thank you. You know, I'm very proud of my uric acid content. Um, anyway, so, so that's not it. And, uh, so she's like, well, I think you have an infection because that, that's what the heat and the redness says to me. And okay. I said, well, that would be very tough to do because I have not injured my my toe or my foot. There's no there's no break in the skin. There's not so it would be really tough yeah. to do that. You know, I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, I love that I'm talking about my damn toe almost as much. No, this. <laughs> hey, listen, anyway. I'm, I asked. So it's true. Anyway, uh, so th- this episode's basically about my toe. That's that's what's up. <laughs> We're gonna call this John's the, toe and the, nothing the, else. The one about John's toe. The one about John's toe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, no. So anyway, uh, the, the, so uh, she doesn't know. So she puts me on antibiotics, but I insist on getting an x-ray. They go and t- do an x-ray. X-ray comes back. Turns out like the joints in my left foot are shitty. I have shitty joints. Okay. It's just a fact. I have injured that foot before. That's right. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Famously. Famously, as as told, uh, as heard on the My Mistake podcast, I once jumped over a 16-foot chain link fence in Birkenstocks with a rose between my teeth to try to get back together with a girlfriend who I never should have tried to get back together with. If you're interested in that story and many more... Check out the Check very out first run <laughs> mm-hmm. before the reboot yes. of the My Mistake Podcast. My Mistake Podcast, Mark One. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so so that it's that toe, the one that I dislocated uh, is the one where all this is going on. Is this so a I'm coincidence, a, John? It turns out, no, it ah. is not. There's there's a real reason why. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah. Th- but, they like, but they're still like, well, the, even though your joints are almost closed up, uh, that's not, that can't be what, what's causing this. Now, I want you to know that, well, I mean, I, actually, I, I'm going to come, I'm going to circle back to that. Put a pin okay. in that. Here we go. Okay. So um, I take the antibiotic mm-hmm. for for seven days and uh, there's no 
progress. Uh, everything's still exactly the same as it was. Great. So now I, but now I have my doctor's appointment that was coming up that I was going to wait for. And, you know, and now I'm, I can actually go and I can see my doctor who actually kind of knows me. It's nice to have a doctor who has like, it's bad in this day and age. If your doctor knows you, you probably go to the doctor a lot. Right. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, I go and see her she looks and she's like, oh, well, clearly you have an infection due to an ingrown toenail. And oh I'm boy. like, oh okay, here's the thing. Great. I Maybe that's it. I don't think so. because. Well, mm-hmm. I'm, not a, I'm not a medical professional. Right, right. I don't know if I've mentioned that before. You may have. It may have come up. I feel like if you had an ingrown toenail, John, there would be... Like visual evidence of that, like ding, maybe ding, some ding, like ding. some specific redness in the area yeah. of the edge of the toenail or something like that. No, yeah. no. By the way, people who have problems with feet are really having a hard time with this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you can feel like you can feel it. You can yeah. feel it if you've had it. Yeah. If if Kale and Chase were listening to this, he would have tuned out a long time ago. Sure. Has, I mean, I've a, had a toe thing. I had my my toenail removed because of a you an know horrible. Toenail. Yeah, infection, yeah. horrible thing. Yeah. Oh no, I just mean he just is grossed out by feet. Oh, I'm not talking about he didn't oh, got Yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. It. Yeah. So I'm like, I okay, fine. Tell whatever you think it is, it's fine, but can I get a referral to a podiatrist? Because at this point it's like <laughs> I think that's what needs to happen, right? Sure. And my doctor's great. I like my doctor. She's she usually I, in this day and age, she gives me mostly what I what I tell her. I have, she has to give me. That's the <laughs> like, best doctor ever. Yeah. I mean, well, not the really good things. Cause I did mention like six times how painful it was. She never <laughs> offered me any good drugs, but Unbelievable. that's all right. And I wasn't going to come right out and ask for them. <laughs> like I want to go on a vacation. That's a word that I made up in, in, in that context. By the way. Oh, I kidding. Oh, I kidding. Yeah, vi- vacation. Yeah. That did not happen. I didn't have those. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, so she made the referral did some other stuff, got me checked. I basically did like a physical uh, because I hadn't seen her in a long time. Okay. All good. Fine, fine, fine. I go and see the uh, podiatrist. She takes one look and she goes, well, you clearly have pseudo gout. Oh. I'm like, okay. Now, I want you to know, Kat, back in urgent care, this is two doctor's appointments ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, my doctor asked if there, if, I, if there was a family history of gout. And I said, no, but my mother did have pseudo gout. Oh. Now, right? Now, here's the thing. I knew that she had pseudo gout. I knew that it hurt. And that's about all I knew. I didn't know about all the symptoms that went along with it. Otherwise, I could have diagnosed myself. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, so, yeah, it turns out like, and, and that was in the first five minutes of the first doctor's appointment. I'm now in the third doctor's appointment. And she looks at it and goes, yeah, this is what you have. Mm. And she's like, I'm like, so she, they gave me either four or five. I'm not sure how many uh, injections directly into the joints involved in the- Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and then- That sounds horrible. Yeah. Yeah. It, it not, I mean, no, actually it's, it was fine because okay. there was a spray. Oh, I don't know if it, I don't know if it was lidocaine or something. Yeah. 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 And the thing was, I had been in so much pain anyway that the spray actually made things better. I'm like, oh, this Fair. is actually, yeah. Did you uh, watch them? And she oh, did? yeah. Of yeah, course. Yeah. 100%. And she commented on that too, that like, she's like, oh, <laughs> you really like to see what's going on, don't you? I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, I, I'll never panic as long as I can see what's happening. It's, mm. it's if I'm like looking at the scene, like, I can imagine things that are so much worse than what's actually happening. That's right. No, you're like, oh, oh yeah, no, I, I host a podcast. She's like, oh, okay, got it. I got it. <laughs> no, that would be like, you could say, I host a podcast with John Fitzgerald. This is nothing. <laughs> this is nothing. I suffer every week. Uh, no, but, it's uh, like, I'm, I'm going to tell the story, so I need I need details. I told her about the podcast. So Did you? I, uh, yeah, I'll be fascinated if it, like if she were to listen to it. Well, okay. welcome, Dr. Blank. I, yeah, I probably shouldn't. That's fine. Uh, that's fine. Doctor T, we'll call her that. Doctor um, T. Doctor T. Um, so uh, yeah, so the injections. The, she gave me a cool boot that hell, I then yeah. ended up wearing uh, to your mother's memorial service. Yeah, uh, love that. It was it was black, so it went with my suit. Everything was fine. Only a few people noticed. 
<laughs> Did people uh, really notice? It, the people really. I I, uh, I think Amber. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think yeah. Noticed it. Sure. Yeah. I got and I got to meet Jill for the first time. Oh, that's fun. Should we sh- circle back to that? We should. I, she said okay. she would be listening for her name. Uh, but, oh, of course. But yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's the got, only reason she listens. That's true. And, and now it's we're at uh, 54 minutes and 39 seconds in. We mentioned Jill. There we go. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, so so but now I because of that and the and the two prescriptions that I got, Toe is back in fighting shape. Hell yeah. There's dude. no pain. Everything is cool. It kills me that I lived like that for like three weeks. Oh. And uh, all it took was Dr. T and her amazing knowledge and skill. Thank you, Dr. And, uh, T. Yeah. I'm walking again, baby. <laughs> hmm? I'm walking over here. Well, congratulations. Thank you. I am so glad that that is... Because, you know, obviously, even though we're not podcasting, you and I have been in constant contact right, right. Uh, through these last however many weeks. And, like, when you told me about your toe, mm-hmm. on top of everything else... I was just like, "Come on, man! Like, what the <laughs> fuck? What what is going on? Mm-hmm. Why mm-hmm. though?" Um, I, yeah. And the, then this... I feel like I I texted you and I asked you like, "Hey, how you doing?" And you may I think you were in the in the doctor's office. I was. You sent me I was. a picture of your 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 naked toe, uh, right? About to be injected. I think so. It's a, it's a toe pick. It's a toe pick. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be extra funny to any figure skaters out there, <laughs> right? Wink, wink oh, to the figure very skaters. Uh huh. Very good. <laughs> um, yeah. I, to be fair, the first time we talked about the toe, I, I actually said, do you want to see it? And you were like, hell yeah. I'm like, obviously. Uh-huh. So there we go. That's... that's. It was that. a solicited toe, toe pick. pick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's the story of my toe. All right. Um, yeah. And then uh, at the... At the uh, so th- th- this is... Uh, yeah, we're we're at the memorial, and yeah. I, you may remember at the end, although you may not, because I found that like during a lot of things that happened during mm-hmm. my period of most intense like grief, I did I don't have good memories of it. Like I don't yeah. re- really know what happened. I like I assume things. Ha- anyway, at the end, there was music playing, and and we were told, you know, thank you. It's yes. that's that is the end. But nobody got up. It was awkward. We weren't sure what to do. It was right. like, should we stand up or... Yeah, it was a weird moment. Well, the, the, there was a woman who had been attending the, uh, the, the, the sign-in book mm-hmm. uh, who was sitting next to us in the pew where we were sitting. Oh. And she let us know, you can get up, by which she meant, <laughs> get up. <laughs> so we were the first ones in in the church to to get up that's good you were the, you you we needed you to lead the flock sure uh so we walked <laughs> out and walked right out the front door great where i stood for the next half hour <laughs> really <laughs> about uh, close to that maybe not a half hour like 20 minutes or something okay but no but the thing was and this makes perfect sense people were staying inside because it was 90 degrees out that's uh, also and, true right unfortunately. so um so we were hanging out out there and I got to see like various friends of the pod. Yeah. Uh, saw Jason Bender uh, was there. And it was uh, like a, and so I think Anne said this on Snop, it was sort of like a who's who of podcasting. Kind of was, kind of was. <laughs> I, 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 I saw Wendy and Tara and I spoke with them for a moment. Oh, good. They did not seem amused by me at all. All Kat. right. And, yeah. And it's, <laughs> it, it may be, this is a, and I think this is a Fitzgerald, uh, maybe it's a Fitzgerald trait. Oh, no. It might be on my mother's side. Um, in, in uncomfortable grief type situations, I do tend to crack wise ah. with people if I feel like that is going to go over. I see. So it's possible that I was doing that with Jill and Amber yeah. and, you know, and Anne. And uh, they, it may be that, <laughs> that they did not approve of me being that way. I'm not sure. Uh, but I, I did. I think I did extend the invitation for either or both of oh, them good. to come on the show. Yeah, we got. It's we gonna. Could, I keep saying it. Mm-hmm. It's gonna happen. We could do a sh- she mistake nerds out my <laughs> she my mistake nerds out. Perfect. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Anyway. 
Yeah, so that was uh, that was a thing, and then eventually, like, uh, it was like, okay, there's going to be a thing after, which we were not going to, simply because it was inside, and yes. we we're still masking and all that kind of stuff. Of course. And uh, and and it was like getting really close to the time that was scheduled to start. So I'm like, you know what? I can talk to Cat later. Yes. Uh, and I I I'm bummed that I didn't get to say hi to it you. It is totally fine. But I knew I knew that you weren't I knew the guys weren't coming to the after thing. Right. Um but yeah, I'm I'm sorry that I missed you guys. But I saw you yeah. come in. I knew th- I knew that you guys were there. So Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Good, good. Yeah. Oh, Pat Patty Lynn. Patty Lynn. Who's, who's Patty Lynn. Very big friend of the, the show. I mean, listen. Her book is out now. It is called End Credits, How I Broke Up with Hollywood. It's very good. I'm halfway through it myself at this point. So, you know, we, the last couple of weeks, went really hard. And I, we knew that Patty's official sort of like book launch was happening. Mm-hmm. And there was going to be this thing and, and the bookstore and the whole launch. And she was going to be there and she was going to be interviewed. And it was going to be great. And... <clears throat> Leah was like, you know, you don't have to go. She's like, oh, oh I will go mm-hmm. without you. And, you know, obviously Patty understands. Like, she's not expecting you to go. And I was like, well, this will be like, it was. It would have been like the first sort of social thing that I, I was going to do after my mom died. Mm-hmm. And it was so important for me to be there. I was like, okay, I am going to do my best to be there. Mm-hmm. And normally when I say that, I don't mean it. <laughs> it's like i am i am delaying the sadness that yeah, you will experience when i tell you i'm not you coming, I'm not uh-huh. coming. Yeah. Uh-huh. but i really meant it and so mm-hmm. i was like yeah no we're i'm going like i, I just i have to go mm-hmm. and so we went and i knew that you and your lovely wife are going to be there john and mm-hmm. i was so glad i went and it was such a cool fucking moment to be a part of to see it a was. friend in her element talking about something that she has labored over and is passionate about like i had nothing to do with it but i'm absolutely so proud of her oh yeah you know, you know yeah. what i mean me too it's like well i i did try to take some credit i'm like of course of because course. because <laughs> watching watching patty lynn oh, do, yeah, yeah, do yeah. q and a mm-hmm. um you know about her book which like at that stage, nobody in that room had read it because it came out that day. Exactly. So maybe a couple people who were actually, you know, the publisher, like people that, that yeah. you know, from Zibby Books. Exactly. Um, they, they like, so, but mostly people had not read the book. So uh, like, but to watch her, she was so good. And people tried to lead her down, like to, like, it was interesting. People would ask leading questions where... They wanted her to say something. It was clear they were setting her, and she didn't say it. No, she's very good. Yeah, she didn't say what they wanted her to say. She said the truth, and, you know, what. it was yeah. just, it was really cool. So then at the end, I had to be like, well, all that public speaking from our podcast must have really helped you with that. <laughs> <laughs> and she did kind of, she's like, actually, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. First she, she said it, no, and then she, 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 gives she a little bit. She gives mm-hmm. a little bit. A little bit. But boy, John, you can attest, she packed that house. It was oh my a gosh. full house. Standing, oh, practically standing room only. It, there it were was. some seats, like, but those were, were gone seats. immediately. Yeah, like long before we got there. Yeah, um, and yeah. we like we were all standing. Like there was a, it was literally a packed house. Burst, like the door, someone would open the door and just kind yep. of like, you know, scoot in enough for the door to close. Yeah. And that was it. Right. Like it was Which packed. was absolutely terrifying when you're like a COVID freak. <laughs> we, like, we, like, yeah. we were masked. Right, we were. Um, Some uh, of the very few people yeah, <laughs> were. I mean, obviously the last thing I wanted to do was to miss my mom, my mom's goddamn memorial because of fucking covid right i became mm-hmm. so paranoid yep well that's it you did oh, not miss it and it would have been it, a nightmare it, it would have but yeah this is anyway, a little book bu- yeah it's a little bookstore in santa monica yeah, with no air conditioning bookstore. love it and so like a hundred people in a room that can people. that could comfortably <laughs> fit 20 um and and uh. like i've heard so many horror stories about like people like whether sometimes it's not even somebody's first book but they're like yeah, I showed up to the book event and there were two people there, <laughs> and it's because I owed money to one of them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. the not not Patty Lynn. Lost. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. No, so, not Patty such Lynn. An incredible turnout, mm-hmm. and I will say that 
Patty's book and her success in this moment has mm-hmm. been a highlight of my summer. <laughs> it's so it, it's so nice to see a friend succeed. Oh, it really I love is. It so much. It there are people so who happy. say the opposite, but I you know, screw those people. It's yeah. I'm just no. so happy. Me too. Um, and she's very busy. She's doing lots of lots of media hits, as they say. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I can't wait to have her on. We can talk about all that. But um, you know. It's obviously she'll be on soon because she always is on soon because we need her, John. Usually <laughs> we, we usually wait for her to pitch us something, but I think we might need yeah. to we might need to reach out this I time. Think, I think I think, I think it's time for Patty to come back on. She's she was all, she's always been a get, but now she's a get. I mean <laughs> like, like mm-hmm. Well, yeah, like there's some you know, it's happened where it's like, "Oh, you know, sorry guys, I can't I can't talk about that cuz I'm, you know, I got I got an interview or I have an article after like it's been like okay that's cool no that's mm-hmm. fine no that's okay what are yep. you to do <laughs> yep. actual media outlets are reaching out to you we understand mm-hmm. <laughs> I actually I, I texted with her just today I hope she'll be okay with me sharing this I'm sure she will uh, there was a story it, there's a story in the book that I was like hey Patty Lynn that story would have been perfect for this one episode that you did why is it, why did you not tell <laughs> And she's like, well, because then it wouldn't have been a book exclusive, would it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So so run out and get that book. Yeah. End <laughs> credits, How I Broke Up with Hollywood. It's got a very colorful cover. It's Beautiful wonderful. Cover. Unless the second half is just awful garbage, uh, the whole book is great because I've, I'm halfway through and I'm loving it. Well, and here's a fun little tidbit. Um, mm-hmm. There is an audio book and it is Patty Lynn who... Uh, who reads it and I love when the author reads their own audiobook because it just feels more authentic they know Um, how they wrote that they know how it's supposed to sound Mm -hmm. Uh, so I love Patty's voice and I love uh, I love that she she had the opportunity to read her own book like I'm I have it in my I'm I'm going on a road trip soon and I have it in my oh you are uh, yeah (laughs) oh what (laughs) it's on my phone Mm-hmm. Um, so Patty's coming with me on my road trip, so that'll nice. be nice. Um, so I'm saving it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I love I love that she's reading her own book. It just uh, I'm gonna, everything I'm gonna about John. Everything about this that. makes me so happy. I'm so proud of her, and I can't wait to talk to her about it when she comes on the podcast. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. All right. Um, so yeah, that like this, this is, I, I love that we did like a, a, this entire episode is just us catching the, the, the mistakers up with what's up Absolutely. with us. I hope that, I hope that that's okay. Well, it better be. <laughs> I, I don't really care if it's not, except <laughs> I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be a bad time for anybody, but no. like, yeah, but, but this, this, this was necessary. Um, yeah, 100%. but yeah, yeah. Uh, and we're, it feels uh, good. It feels good. It feels good to be back. It does. Um, I definitely missed talking to you, John, but also being able to just share mm-hmm. uh, share what's been going on with us, with our listeners. Because honestly, John, like this is a very... Uh, <laughs> I don't talk about my emotions very much mm. in my normal life mm-hmm. um, with a lot of people. So coming on to... Um, our podcast together and talking about very personal details about our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really kind of, it's, it's, it, it's changed the way I interact with people. It's made me a much more open person and honest person um, with Love myself that. and with others. So like, it's, you know, I, I missed it. I missed mm-hmm. coming to do that. It is it kind of, it is like therapy. It is a bit. It is. And uh, like, if you remember at the beginning, we were, we were both a little reticent. We were like, oh, what are we going to talk? Are we really going to talk about some of this stuff? And it's yeah. like, one of, the, one of the really freeing things for me, because I'm, I'm, you know me, I'm pretty much boundaryless. I, I will talk about almost anything if somebody is interested. Uh, like, so, so I, yeah. Uh, but, but I was concerned about doing it on the podcast. One of the really freeing things for me to realize was that people don't care. <laughs> people, <laughs> mostly not. people don't care and the people who do care they're probably cool yeah. um, un- unless we get big and famous and then then there will be people who care who aren't cool and that's the oh whole boy. thing yeah, what are you gonna that's do awesome. maybe maybe it's best not to get famous but can yeah. we get rich but we'll, not famous we'll ask I'd like Patty that. all about that yeah exactly <laughs> exactly what's it like being famous 
uh, yeah, yeah. The, the most freeing thing in the world is like, oh my gosh, it doesn't matter that much. It's like, you know, and it will matter to some people and that's wonderful. And that's who we're doing this for. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you, do you, here's a completely random piece of information. Do you remember who Jennifer Jason Lee is? I once met Jennifer Jason Lee. She was in, uh, what was that? What was that big one that she was in? Was it Single White Female or something? It was a, he, She was a he, bit, very big movie star. Well, she was in um, like Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Um, yes. Yes. Big star. Huge yeah. star. Mm-hmm. She stopped doing movies. Because, oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Like, have you seen her lately? When's the last time you saw mm-hmm. Jen, Jennifer Jason Lee? I'm trying to remember. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know she, what the last... She left the business. Okay. And I recently saw... Um, I do a lot of, uh, I enjoy Instagram, John. Okay. <laughs> I have you heard do of it? not. I have heard of it. I do. I'm, I am, I am very much like, I still am on Facebook a little bit, uh, because I'm old and I have old friends who are still on Facebook, but not many, but a few. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, I, I, I basically check in on Instagram whenever Michelle sends me something, okay. uh, <laughs> Well, <laughs> a, 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 like a reel that I have to watch. Or something. John, I love the reels. Oh, I'm all about the doesn't? reels. Um, and I saw a reel recent, recently mm-hmm. about Jennifer Jason Lee. Mm-hmm. And it was basically like she left the business. Okay. And a sort of TMZ type person caught up with her. She was leaving the airport, uh, like LAX or something. She looks mm-hmm. completely different. And they're like, hey, Jennifer, like, do you think you ever, you know, what, what director would need to give you a call to bring you back out of the business. And she's like, <laughs> there's no one that I would come back for. And they're like, mm-hmm. oh, why? Like, what's, what, why not? I like being a normal person. Awesome, <laughs> right? She yeah. likes having a life and not having to worry about what people think about what you look like or what you say or what you do. Mm-hmm. Um, and boy, I mean, you know, compared to what it must be like to be someone like Meghan Markle or fill in the blank. Yeah. Drew Barrymore, God help you, Drew. Oh boy. Um, yeah, it must be nice to just be like a normal, boring person. Oh yeah. I mean, the, the, when I said that I met, I hope I'm not exaggerating. I, I shook Jennifer Jason Lee's hand. Okay. Um, at the time that I did it, I honestly did not know who she was. We were in a dimly lit movie theater, and she was with a friend of mine. And the friend said, "This is my oh, friend right. Jen." And I said, "Nice you to meet you, Jen." Story. And she, it was either Jen or Jenny. I can't remember which. But anyway, I shook her hand. And then we went back. And the, the guy I was with, who, you know, my buddy, we were there to watch the movie. He goes, oh, my God, that was Jennifer Jason Lee." And I'm like, it was? It was? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I mean, like, that, that's the extent of my, you know, it's, we're not old pals. She would not remember no, I that. Didn't, I didn't take that to me at all. Yeah. But, uh, but, yeah, no, I get it. Because, like, let's face it. What in the world would be better than being than having enough money to do like the things that you want to do, but nobody knowing who you are? Yeah. Like I think that'd be fabulous. That's the key. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. the trick. Get rich, not famous. Yeah. Boom. That's good advice, Boom. everybody. I think I think it's a good note to uh, to to uh, FMP out on. Perhaps I agree. is I it? Agree. Yeah. yeah let's do All right. It. So we're back. We're back, uh, baby. We guarantee. Well, guarantee is strong. <laughs> we promise we're going to try not to have any reruns for the for the near foreseeable future. Yeah, we're going to try That's, really hard. Yeah. Yep. We're uh, we're going to work hard for you guys. Working hard consists of us talking to each other, I working, guess. Working hard over here, okay? Working, working hard or hardly working. Okay. Mm. Which is. Oh. Mm. Oh. 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 <laughs> FMP. FMP.